Everybody knows why hummingbirds hum? It's because they don't know the words. Well, sometimes <laughs> I feel like a hummingbird up there. Isn't God good? Stand up. Y'all Y'all sit down too fast. If you can't stand, then put your hands up. <laughs> there you go. There's more than one way to baptize a heathen. All right. We're going to we're going to talk about something very timely. Very, very timely. Again, you cannot ignore what's going on in our country. Can't ignore it. We can sit back and, and preach jelly beans and wonder bread all you want, but you know what? When we step outside that door, something very powerful happens. We get a chance to let Jesus Christ shine through us in all of this mess. Amen? He is the king in all this mess. And not only are we having mess with the world, with the pandemic, we're having mess with the riots, we're having mess with all kinds of But I'm going to tell you, the, one of the key things that's going on, and if you're not careful, it will happen to you. How many... Say, please don't let this happen to me, Lord. Don't let me turn out like this. Uh, in this pandemic, in this, all of this stuff, because we're having the perfect storm. And that is, get your Bibles out. I got, to, uh, I baptized somebody last week. My, that's where it's at. It's at the baptistry. All right. You love the Lord. Say amen. All right. Get your Bible out. And we're going to talk about, please don't leave when you see the topic. Here it goes. Anger. Anybody seen anger lately? Anybody experienced anger towards you lately? Has anybody experienced anger in your own self? When I see all the stuff going on, I, honestly, I get angry. And then there's somebody, somebody, then this well, very well meaning Christian person will come up and go, you know, God don't want you to be angry. I'm going to give him some Hebrew to that. Okay, it's okay to be angry. All right, that's what we're going to do right now. It's, it's not the problem of being angry. It's the problem of channeling it when you are angry. So turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Look at somebody and tell him it's okay to be angry. All right, but it's how you use it. Ready? Here it is. This, this, now, somebody's going to say I'm meddling right now, and that's okay, because if, if I don't meddle sometimes, then I'm not doing my job. All right? Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Matter of fact, why don't we all read it together? That'll be cool. Ready and go. Be, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let, let's do that one again. That, that one. Did that feel good? <laughs> yeah, some of y'all look like, yeah, so, so, give me a pair of pliers so I can pull my teeth while we're sitting here with no anesthesia. Ready? Let's do it again. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about this. So just in case I don't hit a place you're thinking about today, it's okay. Give me a chance. i got to build this, okay? Because if I don't build it, somebody may not come back next week to hear the rest of it. Okay, I want to keep you, I want to keep you hungry for this, all right? So, so let's, let's pray. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, God, that you're alive and well on the throne, Father. I thank you, God, that all things are in your hands, that you're in total 100% control. There's never been a time that you were not in control. There's never been a time that you took your eyes off of this situation. Lord, you knew ahead of time all this was going to take place. And that's why you raised up your body, not to run and hide, but your body to rise up and be counted, to rise and shine. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. And church said... Amen. Amen. Make us say the past is behind us. Past the future is ahead of us. Ahead God, of us. Is God is with us. And nothing shall be impossible. Shall be impossible. Praise, praise God, praise God, praise God. You know, uh, <coughs> some wild things have been going on. Uh, how many got a chance to even work from home lately? <coughs> Amen? You should be working at home anyway, but I mean, you got a chance to work from home. Amen? I, I, I had to ride by and I saw a burglar kicking in his own door. I said, what are you doing, dude? He said, I'm working from home. <laughs> okay, you'll get it. If you did get it, 
get it, you're just probably still not going to laugh. That's okay. I thought it was funny the first time I heard it, but I'll see this this time. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you a story. I've used this story many, many times since over the years, but again, this, this just fit so perfect about what's going on now. There was this guy, his name was Brandon. Or was it Brandon? Yeah, I think it was Brandon. Mr. Brandon. Okay. He was the top dog in a very large company. It was a cherry point in a very large company. <laughs> okay. Every morning, he met with some of his people for breakfast, and on this particular morning, he lost track of time. He looked at his watch, and he realized that he was going to be late for work. So he left the restaurant, jumped in his car. He barely had the engine started. When he threw it in reverse to back out, he burned rubber leaving the parking lot. He got on the freeway. Uh, well, Highway 17 is a freeway. Okay. He got on the, and put the gas to the fiberglass. As he sped down the highway, he looked in his rearview mirror, and his heart skipped a beat when he saw a flashing light. So uh, he pulled over and rolled down his window and said, the police officer said, where are you going in such a hurry? Uh, I had a man the other day stop me and said, uh, Said, a uh, policeman stopped me and said, Son, I said, What is it? I've been waiting for you here all day. I said, Oh, the officer, I got here as fast as I could. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are you going in such a hurry? He said, I'm needed to work. He said, Abruptly, I'm a very important man. Well, you're not above the law. I didn't say I was, but shouldn't you be chasing some real criminals? Can't you just leave me alone? I'll leave you alone in a few minutes, sir. Let me see your driver's license, registration, and proof of insurance. So Brandon handed him the requested information. There he sat and stewed as the minutes passed by. He got more and more angry. The officer came back, handed him a ticket along with the rest of his documents. He grabbed him out of the officer's hands, rolled up the window, and took off down the road. He finally arrived at Cherry Point. He was really, really, really late now. When he got to work, the first person he saw was one of the sales managers. He said, good morning, Brandon. The sales manager said with a smile, he said, there's nothing good about it. He barked it, uh, you know, barked out. I want to see you in my office now. The sales manager followed him to his office, and Brandon threw his coat on the couch, and he yelled at the sales manager, you fell short of your goal last week for the second week in a row. I want you to know that you're going to get, uh, gonna, if you don't get back on track, you know what's going to happen. And I want to know what you're going to do about it. So, the, the, the sales manager said, we just talked about this yesterday. We have four big deals, and any of them can put us over the top, and I'm sure that we'll get at least one of them. He said, I believe it when I see it. So, so Brandon blurted that out, and while he was looking at some other papers on his desk, he said, you're dismissed, and he slammed the door. Then we went to the sales manager, walked back to his office. When he got there, the first person he saw was his assistant. He screamed at her. He screamed at her. He just screamed at her. What are you doing, Robert? So she screamed at someone who was screaming. She was screaming at someone who had just screamed at someone else. And so it went for the rest of the day, one after another after another. Eventually, the receptionist got yelled at. When she got home, the first person she saw was her 12 year old boy. She yelled at him and sent him to his room. On the way to his room, he saw the family cat walk in front of him, so he kicked the cat. Here's the question. Wouldn't it have been much better for everyone involved if Brandon had just gone directly to the receptionist's house and kicked the cat himself? <laughs> yeah, leave out all this anger. Leave out all these hurt feelings and all these people that are, that are really being hurt. So, so, <laughs> so now we're going to talk about why it's kicking the cat. That, that, that's, you know what? I meant to put some red hair, but that's a 12-year-old. That's not Brandon. That's a 12-year-old kicking. Okay, so, so we're going to talk about anger for a little bit. So please don't get angry with me. <laughs> All right, so, so, so here we go. Ready? We're going, to get, we're going to start today. We'll finish it next week, I suppose. If we don't, don't get angry. Don't get anxious. We'll be okay. Everybody knows anger's got a nature about it, okay? That there is a nature about anger. See, see uh, this is definitely contrary to some people's theology but anger is a God-given, powerful emotion. Did you know that? God gave you the emotion of anger. It is a response to an injustice, a pain, or a threat. 
A person makes the conscious choice to take action immediately to stop the threatening behavior of another outside force. Okay? God gave you anger. This is healthy. When it's expressed in the right way, it's very powerful. It moves. It works. It breathes. It causes you to get up off your seat and do something. Look at somebody say, it's okay to be angry. Tell somebody. If they look at you funny, say, what well, the preacher just said it was. Okay, so here we go. Now, let's just talk about it. You know, Moses, he got angry when he come down from the he come down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments and he sees the people worshiping a calf they had built that they had brought him, brought him out of Egypt. He gets angry and breaks the tablet. David, he got angry all the time, especially when he found out he was the man. Nathan's talking to him about the ewe lamb and, and, and all this and was, uh, after Uriah's, the thing with Uriah. And, and David got angry and said, who is this man? I'll kill him. <laughs> David, look in the mirror, buddy. That reminds me, I didn't have an uncle one time that was so mean. Every morning when he shaved, he had to hold a gun to his, <laughs> I mean, uh, a gun to his head to keep him cutting his own throat. <laughs> That's mean, okay? All right, he had an anger problem. All right, God got angry. He told Moses, I would regret they even made these people. Look at them. They don't pay attention to what they're doing. They don't know what's going on. They want to serve other gods. I can't get them to get their act together. Moses, let me kill them, and I'll start over with you. And Moses says, hold on. Hold on. You're, you're an awesome God. You've got mercy and grace. Let's try not to kill too many at one time, okay? And then Jesus himself got angry. He looked over Jerusalem and he said, I, I want it so bad just to come and call you in my arms and take care of you. But you won't listen. You won't pay attention. You want to do it your way, okay? So, 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 so anger is a, an emotion. It's a healthy emotion. You find somebody, I mean this, you... Listen, listen, listen to me very carefully. You find somebody that never, I didn't talk about how to express it. That's a different story. You find me somebody that never, ever gets angry. Didn't say loose temper. Never gets angry. Matter of fact, here's one of my sayings. It's okay to show teeth, just don't show tail. Y'all get that in a minute. <laughs> Okay. You show me somebody that never gets angry and I'll show you somebody that's on some pretty tough medicine. Okay? Because God gives us this to keep us moving and to keep us in order, to keep us going in the right direction, to, to help us to, to maintain, to take care of things around us. Okay? Uh, so, so here we go. Ready? Let's, let's, go, let's dig a little deeper. There's four sources of anger. Okay? Now, now, it even goes very much deeper than what I'm getting ready to say. Because remember, this is all surface stuff today. We'll get deeper next week. So, we're looking at surface stuff, all right? There are... <laughs> yeah, that's me in school, too. I remember one day when we were supposed to be reading. Everybody was real quiet in class, and they were reading. I was in Miss Potter's fifth or sixth period, fifth period, and I was reading... They're all reading. I come in with a milk carton. I drank all my milk. And I remember as they were playing Jim Croce real slow and easy on the, on the, on the record player. We used to have record players. Some of y'all don't know what a record player is. But there's a, uh, now they've come out with new record players. All right. They got every kind of thing. But, and we're listening to Jim Croce. And everybody's reading. And I come in. And I took my milk carton. And I said, wouldn't it be cool? I was even talking to myself. Okay. I know y'all. Wouldn't it be cool if somebody would just stomp this milk carton? Hey, there's nobody to do it. So I'll do it. In Pamela County Grammar School, upstairs, that thing sounded like a 20 M80s going off. <laughs> Boom! And of course, Miss Potter, I was, I was appalled. She said, David, right to start with. <laughs> Without looking up. She said, David! I said, yes, ma'am. She said, what'd you do? I said, well, I was just trying to get by the ordinary room in the trash can. I was trying to make that thing small so I could get in the trash can. She said, well, come up here. 
And I had to write like a hundred times, I will not ever come back into Miss Potter's classroom in fifth period and take out a milk carton and put it on the floor and fold it up and kick it and make a real loud noise and disturb everybody in class. And I had to write that a hundred times. I know. Y'all thought I was doing it wrong too. Okay. Here it is. Hurt. Has your heart ever been wounded? Just, just, I'm just going to stop because, like I said, this is all surface stuff. We can dig deeper and deeper and deeper. I could go on this for months, but I'm just right here. Has your heart ever been wounded? So when your heart gets wounded, one of the responses to it is anger. But matter of fact, when, when somebody finds up, you know, a lot of times because of anger, we're detached from somebody. We get detached from them. And so when the detachment happens, here's how it starts. It starts with disbelief, hurt. Then as we have time to think about it, it becomes anger. And as it becomes anger, it actually it actually will, will, will put a callus over the relationship and push it to the side. So there's a hurt. You, you, your heart, not only has it been hurt, then the anger takes place. As the anger takes place, you push that person aside and then it gets calloused over. So, so four sources of anger would hurt. Number two, injustice. Your rights. Your right has been violated. Your rights, your right, how are you going to put it? It's been violated. We hear a lot about this in the last few months. We were hearing about this before, before George Floyd, before any of this ever happened. We were hearing this stuff, but the stuff was about had to do with masks and social distancing and how we were should be wearing masks. And somebody said, well, then my rights are being violated. If I've got to wear a mask everywhere I go. So see, it started. All this stuff started way before George Floyd uh, had that horrendous situation there. But then it got a little further and a little further than, than, than everybody's already on edge with everything and then here comes George Floyd and, and, and so then now people are really thinking rights are being violated and so then the next one fear. Your future is threatened. Right now there's a lot of angry people in this world. Part of them are angry because their heart has been wounded. Others are angry because their rights have been threatened. Others are angry because now their future is threatened. All this stuff going on, you know, the artists looting and, and, and cities, blocks of cities devastated. And in the middle of all this, now we got these hurricanes and twisters coming in. It's just, it's just like I said, it's a perfect storm. I'm pretty sure today, right now, you can find yourself already in one of the first, second, or third things I just showed you, or all three of them. Don't raise your hand, but it's there. And when these things happen, you get angry. If anger is not channeled correctly, then it shuts your brain down. Listen carefully. That's why it's so important how you channel your anger. My anger starts in my, listen carefully, in the frontal lobe. That's where all your cognitive reasoning's at. But once it gets out of control, your frontal lobe, your reasoning shuts down. And it shoots back to the back of your brain, which goes on autopilot. Now you start doing things that you say later on, I cannot believe I said that, I can't believe I did that, I can't believe I told them that, I can't believe I walked out, I can't believe I blew up, I can't believe this, this, this. But the whole thing is, if anger's not channeled properly, after you've been hurt, after an injustice, after fear, if you're not careful, once it boils, that's why it says, uh, let the sun go down on your wrath. Wrath and anger is two different things. Anger is healthy, wrath is not. Wrath is when it gets out of control. It's the front where you're thinking, it goes to the back, 
And it can go on, believe it or not. Once you've had, listen carefully. If you've had a big enough problem happen to you right this moment, if you're not careful, it can take up to 48 hours for the front to start thinking again. 48 hours. Wow. So that's why we got to be careful. We got to watch this now. So watch, look. Then, just the whole world just frustrated. No matter how you're trying to fix it, you can't fix it. You got this side trying to fix it, this side trying to fix it. You got the stores trying to fix it. You got, you know, uh, all this stuff's going on. People are moving, they're leaving places. There's all kinds of things going on because of all the stuff that's happening. And it's all being fueled by anger. And remember, when anger gets out of control, you stop thinking. And you just start doing. That's how people get shot. That's how buildings get burnt down. That's how things get out of control because you're no longer thinking. It's all back here. You're in a survival mode. So now, now so here we are. Here's anger. Here's this powerful emotion that God gives us. That, that now. Again, let's take, can we take it deeper? Y'all ready to go some deeper here? It is good stuff. Yeah. Matter of fact, this will help you. I promise this will help you. This will help you to help others. You know, a lot of times uh, you can't even tell a person to calm down. Calm, calm down. J -j just calm down. I don't want to calm down. When you hear that, just remember, it's done left the building. Elvis has left the building. They're not thinking here anymore. It's all back here in autopilot. So you better know how to handle it, or somebody you might be the one that gets hurt. So now, so now I see this. There you are. Anybody ever felt that way? <laughs> I actually took a selfie. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> So here we go. Here we go. Ready? Here, here's, so, so we have anger's nature, but now we're going to talk about anger's nurture. Okay? Anger is fed by feelings of disappointment, rejection, and embarrassment. So again, we can take it on a personal level. On a personal level. How, how many times on a personal level have you felt disappointment? Lately. Yeah. How many times on a personal level have you felt rejection? Uh, how many times on a personal level have you felt embarrassment? That feeds the anger and that zaps your emotional strength and takes it to the back again. And crazy things happen. You say crazy things. You do crazy things. So, I just heard about a teenager, a teenager, I forget, I think it was in Chicago, I'm not sure, I can't keep up with it anymore, this news is such a big thing now, you can't keep up with where things going on, but a teenager, I think he was 15, 16 years old, was just trying to confront a demonstrator, and he was stabbed multiple times, gas was thrown on him, and then he was lit on fire. This is not in Iran. This is not in Afghanistan. This is right here in the United States. It happened just a few days ago. The boy died in the hospital. What was that driven by? Anger. I guarantee you, I, I ask people all the time and pay attention. I ask them, about, when I'm doing, when I'm doing uh, uh, the 12 steps, I'll ask them like this. I sit and I say, okay, let me ask you a question. How many in here are in here for habitual stuff, and how many's in here because you lost control one time? The majority of the people in there will say, I'm in here because I lost control one time. Wow. Can you imagine being sent to jail and you're in there for months because you lost control one time? Remember, and they don't even say, I don't know why I did it. 
And I say, well, I can tell you, but you don't want to hear it. And they go, what? And I say, well, Elvis left the building. What are you talking about? I said, well, put it this way. The wheels on the bus don't go round and round. You stop thinking. And you start doing stupid stuff. Okay. Anger pits you against whatever's part of the emotion. It's the opposite. The actual opposite of the feeling of love. Love draws you to a person. Anger sets you against a person. Think about it. Have you ever been sitting there with somebody and you're having a good time with them, you're enjoying them and all that, and they say something that makes you angry and all of a sudden you don't want to be around them anymore? You could be with them for days, weeks, months, and everything's cool. They get angry and they don't want to be around them. You see, that's because anger is actually, the emotion of anger can be the opposite of the feeling of love. One draws, one pushes. Okay? So sometimes it's just better to let the person that's on fire, that's expressing their emotion in a bad way of anger, don't try to fix it. Because as you try to fix it, guess what? Why don't you just go and take a bucket of gas and throw it on the fire? When somebody's getting out of control, best thing you can do, if you can, is just back off. I've seen children lose control. They might be, my boys lost control. I just back off and and when it, when it got way out of control, I jumped in. I kept saying, you need to calm it. You need to calm it down, boy. You know, my daddy had a good saying for this. Don't let your, don't let your mouth write a check that your hind bar can't cash. <laughs> So, 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 here you go. We got the anger going on. Let's just, let's just, let's just talk a little bit. You know, it is, I'm telling you, it's some good stuff. Even though, you know, it might make your hopes make you think about your own life and your own situations. Okay? So now, so now, anger, y'all say this, anger always has consequences. Anger always has consequences. Anger is never neutral. Anger ever. Never. Ever. Y'all say it again. Anger is never neutral. Never. So ready? Here we go. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go through it, and then I'm, I'm almost through. Some of y'all are going. Would you please hurry up? I got one toe left, and the toenails hanging right now. Don't worry. Don't worry. Sometimes you feel like the boot. Sometimes you feel like the cat. It don't matter. All right. Here we go. Good anger. Healthy anger. Brings a challenge to your spirit. That's what it's there for. God put healthy anger there to challenge you. Okay? When I look down and I walk across to wherever I'm walking and I see something going on that's out of the way and it makes me angry. I see a child, you know, uh, uh, being abused. Or, or I even had a, I was sitting down with uh, Anna Lane and Emmy yesterday and they were talking about what happens. But we're doing this thing in life. Sort of like life hacks. I'm not even sure what you call it. I was asking questions, you know. And, and it said, what are you, it said, which one's in more danger? And, and it showed a, a, a dog in a car while the person went in the, in the store. And a dog was in there with the windows rolled up. And then it showed something, something else over here. And I told the girl, says the dog with the window rolled up. And they said, why is that, Papa? I said, because, because that dog can suffocate from heat. He can die from heat in that place. And she said, well, what would you do? And I said, well, li literally, literally, as far as I know, the law protects you. If I come across the st car in the parking lot and there's a baby or a dog in there and the windows are rolled up tight and the doors are locked, if I bust out that window, it don't matter. I don't care whether they get mad or not. I'm busting out the window if I can't find them. You know, because that baby could die in minutes. That dog could die in minutes. Okay. Who would even do that? They say, well, who would do that, Paul? I said, well, sometimes people aren't thinking. They're just getting the storm thinking. Well, you know what? I'm just going to run in and run right back out. Well, again, when I, walk, when I go to Walmart or somewhere and there's a dog or a baby in a car beside me and the windows are rolled up, I immediately my, I feel the challenge until I see that the car is running and there's an air conditioner on. Okay. Then, then the, the dog's okay. So it's a challenge. Challenge. It brings confrontation, which is healthy. 
then it starts getting kind of unhealthy when now the challenge becomes very, very great and your confrontation is not working. We're going to talk about the building of anger. So now, now, so now, now I've confronted and it's confronted back. I'm trying to bring a solution, but the solutions are not being accepted. And now the person I'm talking with or the situation I'm talking with is starting to, 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 to get unhealthy. And you and the other party, there starts being an explosion. Because that was compounded. Once the explosion takes place, once we get compounded in this thing, then there's a collapse. Again, this is unhealthy. There's a collapse. The collapse is you implode. And when you implode, here's what happens. I just talked about it a minute ago. The porch lights go off. You quit thinking. Now you're in the back. Now you're defending yourself. Now you're just trying to take care of business. And now the, the mind knows every mammal on earth. This happens to every mammal. And every mammal. Somebody say every mammal. Every mammal. God put this in every mammal so they can be protected. They can protect themselves. This shuts down. You go into protect mode. Now, you've imploded, and honestly, you're losing control. Have we seen that lately? Every time you turn on the news, we see it. So watch this. Once you implode, it becomes contagious. I don't have to even comment. I can look at every situation we're going through and see a situation where this starts happening. From simple as wearing, 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 being asked to wear a face mask, uh, a, a girl was asked to wear a face mask and she just took her, she got mad and she turned her cart over and went through and just started throwing off stuff off the shelves as she went out in the store. The sign said, wear a face mask when you come in here. So she gets mad, she implodes, and she just starts pulling stuff off the shelf and runs out. Stomps out. Or, what started out as peaceful, now becomes very unpeaceful. So then, it rubs off. And then finally, contaminates. Now you've got a nasty, unlivable environment. And when this happens, nobody, y'all say nobody. nobody, nobody's safe. Nobody is safe. Tell me that this doesn't describe the day we're living. So now, let's talk about anger's negatives here, okay? Ready? The Bible says, Psalm 37 and 8, refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Anger and wrath are two different things. This is talking about something very, 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 very powerful, something that's gonna gonna hurt you, that's gonna, it's gonna be very negative, it's gonna just be very, very harmful to, to anybody. That, that can be around you. So look, wrath is now when your temper is starting to take control because it's soothed. I mean, you know, now it's, it's smoldering in your brain. It is going round and round and round. Matter of fact, the reason it says don't let your son, don't let the sun go down your wrath, watch this. Have you ever gone to bed mad at somebody and woke up more angry at them? Have you ever gone to bed Upset with your spouse, wake up in the morning and ready just to cry. Why? Because you let listen. Once you get when you're trying to sleep, while your mind is trying to process this, is processing these negative emotions. While it's processing these negative emotions, now you got dreams coming in. You got all kinds of things and all, all negative things are happening. When you wake up, you're ready to kill the person you went to bed with that night, and they hadn't done anything. Because Satan used that as a doorway. It says, give no 
foot place to the devil. Give it a place to the devil where he can get his foot in the door. You see, you couldn't go to bed with a disagreement, but don't go to bed with, with wrath. Okay? So then, now, so here we go. Ready? This, honestly, this is, this is probably some of the most awesome stuff. If we quit, don't take it personal, then we're not a preacher in here trying to get me today. He's picked me out. But I promise you, I hadn't picked anybody out. The only person I picked out of here, the only one, is the one that's holding this. I'm the only one. When I read through all this, I said, God, please, please, don't let me stomp my feet so bad I can't even walk when I get out. Okay? Psalm 37, 8, in, the, in the, the, another version, refrain from anger and give up your rage. Do not be agitated. It can only bring harm. Proverbs 22, 29 and 22, a man of wrath stirs up strife and one given to anger causes much transgression. The message version says, anger people stir up a lot of discord. The intemperament stir up trouble. Wow. Wow. If this don't show, and again, you don't have to go, don't just go to the, the looting and the riots. Go to anything. Go to the fa face mask. There's people who want to tear your face off because you're wearing a face mask. Your rights, my rights are not going to be violated. Dude, I'm not violating your rights. When I wear a face mask, I'm just saying that I'm my brother's keeper. I'm trying not to get it on you. Just, you know, that's it. And I'm just trying to render unto Caesar's what Caesar. He said, wear a mask when you're out in public. That's what I'm doing. Do I like it? No. Do I forget it? Yes, I forget it from time to time. Do I, am I, do I get all burnt out, bent out of shape if somebody's not wearing a mask? No. I was walking to Walmart doing some shopping yesterday and I heard a child looking up at their daddy and, and the whole family was there, like five or six of them, none of them had masks on. And I heard, I, I was getting some cereal and I heard, I, I overheard it. I, just, I didn't, I weren't trying, I weren't listening in, I just overheard it. And the girl said, Daddy, why's everybody else got face masks on and we don't? He turned and said, to a kid that's not even going to understand, well, science has proven and then, then I tuned in. Science has proven that the six foot, standing six foot apart does a whole lot more than wearing a mask. And I, I said to myself, okay. I walked past him, still my mask on. And just, yep, <laughs> it kept on going. I don't know what all the answers are. I have no idea. None. None whatsoever. But getting angry is not going to solve because when you get angry, watch this, and I'm going to expound on this. When you get angry, there's a negative of anger. I'm talking about losing control now. You lose confidence, energy, faith, freedom, identity, perspective, sensitivity, and vision. Think about it. Let's just, let's just expound on this. Ready? Let's go for a minute. Let's take us for a ride. Then we're getting ready to close. Let's go for a ride. Here you go. First, loss of confidence. You get feeling insecure about your relationship with God and your ability to respond wisely to difficulties. I remember one time I was at Fountain and I was known at Fountain for somebody to keep your cool. I'd always... Do my best to keep my cool. If I was not going to keep my cool, I tried to walk away. And I remember one, one, one day I'm sitting there and all the engineers are around me. And Daniel called me. Daniel was working in service and warranty. And Daniel called me. And he said, supervisor. And I, and I didn't even give anybody a chance to even talk. I heard this and Daniel popped out. He said, Daddy, I'm not having a good day today. I said, what's going on? He said, well, the supervisor just told me, told me that I was a no good loser. And I'd never amount to anything. Without saying, Daniel, are you sure you heard it or going to try to figure it all out? I went, what? He said, Daddy, he told me I was a no good loser. I never amount to anything. I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down there. Let's show him what a full grown version you can do. <laughs> one of the engineers in 
somebody said, wow, I've never heard that out of your voice ever. I've been working for years. I've never heard that out of you. What's going on? And I said, and I told them what had happened. They said, you know the supervisor. Do you think he'd say it that way? And I said, watch this. I had to go. <laughs> And I said, no, he wouldn't. And so I went down there and I checked everything out and it wasn't quite. <laughs> I decided when I went down there to show teeth, not tail, and I'm glad I did. Okay, so it's a confidence. Energy. You start lacking strength for your service to God and others. Anger will wear you out. Faith. Failing to believe that God is working in your life. Freedom. Becoming a prisoner of your emotions and unable to serve God freely. Somebody that's full of anger, I'm telling you, they're not thinking. They just can't think. Because again, every time, remember, once your, once your temper gets flown in, switch pops on the back and there goes, I will do as many stupid things as I can do before this wakes back up. Okay, freedom. Prisoner, identity. Becoming like the person or becoming like the person from whom you are bitter rather than becoming like Christ. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. Somebody go, ouch! Or amen. That one got my toe really bad. Right, That one right there. If I take off my shoe, you know why. People say, well, so now, for now, two, four, two. I said, that was Old Testament. I said, let me tell you something about, something about uh, 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 etymology. Let me tell you something about Bible translations and, the, you know, and, and, and all the linguistics and stuff in the Bible. You take it all back and you put it together and you find out if something in the Old Testament is, has not been addressed in the New Testament, the Old Testament stands. But what is in the Old Testament, if it is superseded, is superseded by what when it's addressed in the New Testament. Then that's when it changes. Jesus said it come to, to him to destroy the law, came to fulfill the law. And so he didn't say, Jesus didn't say, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Jesus said, don't you be that way. Paul said, don't return evil for evil. I got people to take care of it. You just return good and watch what will happen. So now, if we're not careful when you get angry, as much as you despise the person you're angry at, because whatever they did, when you become angry, you will find yourself becoming just like them. Why? Again, boop, snap. This is I for an eye, tooth for a tooth. This is do not return evil for evil. Powerful stuff. And then, perspective. You allow your emotions to distort your thinking. And you hear things like, well, they always do this. They never do that. Really? You know, I was talking to my dad this morning from way up here. And he just got another set of hearing aids. He went to get his hearing aids fixed, and they couldn't fix them. And so he got more hearing aids, and they were like $4,000. And so we're in there, and I walk in the door, and I see dad, and I know he didn't have it. And, and, and here he is having to pay this, and y'all don't say anything to him, I know. And anybody out there in Facebook land, they don't tell my dad that I just said this. But my dad didn't even say a word. He just sat there and figured out how to do it. He said, well, how many, how many months do we go? Well, he's going back and forth, and he took the highest amount, and it was going to cost him just as much interest as it was for the things. And I walked over to the lady behind the counter, and I said, can I talk to you for a minute? She said, yes. I said, how can we get that down? manageable. And she said, well, somebody's got to put some money down. I said, well, I got three of us. I know can put some money down on it, but one of us is going to do it today. The other two will do it later. What do you think? She says, okay. And so I gave him some money. And, and it, honestly, it was a sacrifice, but here's what I said. But look, it was a sacrifice. Then my other brothers kicked in, and then he got down to where he could buy. It was bite size, no interest. Really turned out good. Daddy did it this morning. First thing he said was, Daddy, Daddy said, thank you so much. I know it was a sacrifice. Thank you. 
And I said, Daddy, out of all the things you've done for me all my life, if I gave you my paycheck every week till you died, but don't expect that. <laughs> I put that in there, that disclaimer. I said, if I gave you my paycheck every week until you died, I could never repay you for what you've done for me. I said, so let's don't talk about this anymore. And he teared up and he said, yes, sir. So again, what happens is when you get angry, you forget what people have done for you. That's what I've started doing now when, when people get angry with people, get angry with situations. I stop now and start thinking, well, what have they done for me in the past? Because if I'm not careful, you get distorted and all you can think about is they're just mean as a snake and they're just, Argh. I don't want to be around them. And you stop thinking, wait, 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 wait. Think about all the times. All the times. All the times. That person you're angry with stepped up to the plate for you. Was there for you when nobody else was there for you. What well, 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 did for you when they couldn't even do for their self. If you can do that, guess what? You can bring down some of that distortion and some of that anger and that deadly perception. Then sensitivity. You fail to hear from the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. Why? <laughs> Again, y'all can do this all week long. My <laughs> front shut down. That's where God's talking to me. <laughs> Back here is where I'm saying, I ain't heard a thing. Well, God wasn't talking to me. Yes, He was, but guess what? You weren't listening. And then vision. You start losing the sense of God's purpose in your life. Now, I'm getting ready to close. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> You're ready. You're ready. <laughs> I can see that. That's a red road sign right there. Many, I can see that. The biggest thing I see is that gap. They can't get ready to get it. Watch this. Here, here's just some thoughts on here's some thoughts on anger. We're getting ready to close. BJ, get ready to play something, man. Get figure something out here. Just don't play any angry style of music. Ready? Okay, ready? Uh, I was going in the pit tent center one night. I was wearing a red shirt. My wife said, "Don't you wear that red shirt in there?" I said, "Why not?" She said, "Cause I just read two things. Red, red, red does. Red, red in a restaurant. You know, in restaurants, there's a lot of red." You ever notice that? You know why? Because red makes you hungry. But red will also make you angry. So she said, you can go in that pit position and make somebody angry and they're going to eat you. <laughs> Here you have an arm, I'll take a leg. Here you have. Red just thought. Your temper's like a fire. It gets very destructive when it gets out of control. Here's my motto. A shut mouth gathers no foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> he who throws, throws dirt loses ground. Sling that bud. Swallowing anger words before you say them is better than having to eat them afterwards. <laughs> have you ever eaten your words? I know I have. Here's another one of mine that I try to live by. Anger is a stone thrown at a lost nest. I was coming out of the house the other day, and, and on the back porch, and there were some chairs, and I had to walk by, and I was working outside, and, and, and I walked out, and I, and I, had, I was just getting ready to sit in that chair to do some uh, an Emmaus meeting by, by Zoom. And I you want me to get on the back porch with that chair where I can be in the, you know, be outside and be cool and not disturb anybody in the house. But this time I, I felt the need just to stay in the house. So I stayed in the house. 
So then I get back up and do some work and I had some tools in my hand and, and in my phone and I didn't want to break anything out there in the yard. So I threw everything in the chair and on the way outside, I noticed something picked up my leg. Kept my leg. So I said, well, when I got outside, I looked and said, well, what in the world is going on? What happened? I got a hole here. What is it? So then I got to do my work and I come back in. Now I'm sweating. I got more stuff in my hands. So I go back to the that chair and I put some more stuff in that chair and all of a sudden I'm getting heated up by fire. And I look down and some yellow jackets. It looked like it looked like Tom Cruise with Top Gun with all the mix going around him. And I said, where'd that come from? And I, I swung them out of the way and I went in to grab the stuff and I said, that chair that I was gonna sit in. Praise God I didn't sit in it. I turned it over and there was a wasp nest or a yellow jacket nest. And they didn't, they wouldn't, they wanted to be left alone. Well I did. I said, rest in peace, my yellow belly, my yellow belly. Thanks. Rest in peace. <laughs> Can you imagine? I had no idea what I was doing when I threw stuff there. And I got stung. Just remember, when you let destructive words come out of your mouth, out of the anger, not constructive words to build, but destructive words out of anger that tears apart. It's like taking that stone and throwing it in a ball stand. It's like kicking a beehive. And then finally, people who fly in rage always make a bad landing. Father, forgive me. 
with this attitude. Forgive me for whatever it is that's blocked me from you. And use me again, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I want to rededicate my life to you. Maybe you're here right now. And you've had some bad experiences with anger lately. Personally, you let anger get the best of you. And because you got the best of you, you said things and did things that just weren't cool. Sometimes one of the best remedies is this. Number one, you got to forgive yourself. you got to ask God for forgiveness. Forgive yourself. And if you can, if it's possible, go to the person that has to forgive you. You don't ever go to a person and instigate forgiveness to them. I forgive you because if you go to somebody and say, look, I just want to talk to you. I forgive you some such such. And y'all never talk about it. You can cause a big fight. They might not even know they did. But you can always go to somebody and say, I apologize without, without anything.